I would like to introduce our student and alumni panel and thank you all so much for all of the great questions um, that you submitted. So we are gonna be joined right now by Alex, who is a Med 1, Cody, who's a Med 2, Lizzie is a Med 3, um, Zach is a rising Med 4, but also finishing up his MBA. He's a dual degree student. Um, Michaela, who is a Med 4 and two second year residents, Dami and Jess. So welcome everybody. Um, I have the questions here. So what I'll do is just kind of let you know ahead of each question who's going to answer. So for the first one, I'm gonna call on both Alex and Lizzie. Alex, you can go first. Um, so how would you recommend Med 1s adjust to medical school in the first few weeks? That's a really good question. I think one of the things that I found most helpful is just not being afraid to try new things. It's not going to seem like it when you're here as an M1. You're going to be a little bit um, overwhelmed with being new and being in a new place and a new curriculum, but you have a lot of time. So really just try like new study methods, try to find your favorite study spots, um, you know, cook your favorite meals, get into an exercise routine. I think your first couple of blocks really give you a lot of time to settle into a routine that is going to make you successful and, and gives you enough time to figure out what's going to make med school easiest for you. Yeah, I completely agree. I think um, the beginning of medical school at the time, it seems extremely overwhelming, um, but Ohio State does a really good job of easing you into the curriculum, um, giving you a good way to kind of, um, they start slow and allow you to learn how to study. Um, and they do a bunch of formative quizzes early on that allow you to see how you're actually retaining the knowledge, which I think is super helpful for you to kind of fine tune and adjust how you study. I personally study completely different than how I did in undergrad. And I actually change my study method almost every single month, but um, kind of learning how to adjust it for the different blocks and with the people. Um, OSU does a really great job of having a lot of support of a lot of different academic support too early on that can help you figure out how to be a successful student. And, and learn how to navigate this change. Thank you for that. Okay, so Cody, I know you're passionate about kind of school life balance. Can you talk a little bit about how Ohio State helps you achieve that? Absolutely. Um, yeah, you're in, med, you're in med school um, or you will be in the fall, but it doesn't mean that you're not a person. And one of the biggest like deciding factors for me when I chose OSU was like the flexible schedule um, that it allows. You do have um, in-person lectures um, pretty much every morning from eight o'clock or nine o'clock until 10, 11, some days even um, noon, but you don't have to attend those. Um, for someone like me who doesn't do well sitting in a large um, auditorium, it was great to be able to adjust um, that and watch it on my own time. But I also knew that I had the flexibility to start every single day, whether I started at 5 a.m. or 11 a.m., I would go do a workout. That was something that was so key to me to start it out on the right track. Um, I knew if I was exhausted from the night before, for example, if I would have stayed up late studying for a quiz um, on a Tuesday, Tuesday night, I maybe sleep in and then Wednesday, I would go work out at 10 instead of five like I would on a normal day. So for me, having that flexibility so that I can still do the things I enjoy was essential. Um, it does come with the understanding that you do have to be good at managing your own time, but OSU gives you the ability to move things around. You have flex modules, all the lectures are recorded. So if you have family plans and for example, you have something planned on a Friday, um, a lot of the times you can just move all the lectures to Saturday and do something that'll help you essentially regain the energy that you need to get through some of the longer blocks. And I found it important to basically schedule in the times that I wanted to do something fun. I'm in the middle of my dedicated study block for step one, which I have in like 10 days. Um, but for me, it's important to take off a day tomorrow. Hopefully it doesn't rain. I'm planning on going golfing so that I get a one day outside so that I can still relax and then push through the last eight days before I take step. Um, and I think OSU does a really good job of instilling the values that you need to get through some of the longer blocks and help you avoid burnout as you go forward in your career, hopefully starting in medical school. Thank you. Okay, Zach Smith, our MBA student. Uh, we had a question directed uh, directly at you. How do you plan to use your MBA degree? And I also wanna to add to that, what advice would you give anybody that's maybe thinking about doing a dual degree? Yeah, absolutely. So I would say um, 
Most people uh, come into medical school thinking that they might want to pursue a dual degree, uh, but that's certainly not the um, requirement. It's pretty easy to pick one up, um, kind of if you fall in love with something during the course of med school. So I was one of the people that came in thinking that I was interested in MBA um, because of a formative experience. I, I had a great shadowing experience in undergrad and really fell in love with the idea of it. Um, so my goal is to one day do uh, hospital administration or leadership and do part clinical and part administration and uh, be able to really see both sides of the hospital. Um, so I would say in terms of um, advice for people that would like to do a dual degree, I would say consider it early um, because at Ohio State, you'll, you'll start to traditionally um, pivot into that dual degree after your second year. Now, I was a little bit atypical. I did it after my third year. And I thought that that was really valuable for me because I was able to really take a lot of what I learned in the hospital and in the clinical world and apply that to my courses. And now I'm going to be able to take those uh, MBA courses and come back and really apply them in my fourth year as well. So I'm excited for that synergy. But I would say uh, thinking about it early because you generally are going to have to take another test. Um, I had to take the GMAT, a lot of them were the GRE. Um, and just making sure you're kind of planning that as early as possible. Um, there's a lot of really great support from both uh, the College of Medicine and, in my case, the College of Business that will help you with the, the process. But the earlier that you think about it and the earlier you start looking at those requirements and thinking about how you can knock them out, um, the better, because you want to make sure that you're uh, ahead of the game for sure. Thank you for that. Okay, so now I'm going to call on our second year resident, Miss Jess here. Um, how did OSU prepare you in a way, once you got to residency, how did OSU prepare you in a way that you noticed that maybe your peers were not? That's an excellent question. I hope everyone can hear me okay. The air conditioning is really loud for some reason in the hospital today. Um, I would say coming into residency, I had a really solid just knowledge base. Um, one of the reasons why I chose to come to OSU was because you have such a huge academic center with such a wide catchment area that you're going to see all the bread and butter of medicine, your standard hypertension, your diabetes, in my case, in the practice of psychiatry, standard depression and anxiety. But because we are the Ohio State University, you also get the zebra cases or the really rare things that you know, it's, it's a once in a lifetime or once in a career time opportunity to see and treat and kind of follow the disease course. So I felt like I was very much so prepared for anything that was put in front of me. And even as a psychiatrist, I still feel comfortable managing blood pressure and diabetes and basic obstetric needs and gynecologic needs. And all of that was because I had such a well-rounded education and fantastic clinical ex experiences at OSU. Okay, Michaela, your turn. Um, what is something that you have learned or experienced at Ohio State that you don't think you could find anywhere else? Another great question. So um, one of the big reasons I wanted to come to Ohio State was because there are so many resources for students that are interested in unique and different things. So um, for example, this is a very concrete example that happened um, early on this year, really wanted more procedural exposure. And so me and another medical student created a course where students could rotate through what we call the PVAT team in the hospital and be able to do procedures on patients um, with supervision of course. So we were doing paracentesis, which is where you drain fluid off of somebody's abdomen. And so this was just something that a student driven initiative that wanted more experience. Everyone got on board with the faculty that we needed, hospital administration, um, because the students wanted a, a unique learning opportunity. So I just think what's really special about OSU is that if the students have an interest and there isn't something, which is honestly kind of becoming hard to find something that OSU doesn't have, but they will facilitate that. And I think that's really special about Ohio State. Okay, Lizzie, what's your favorite aspect about the College of Medicine? Yeah, um, I think OSU has a lot to offer. Um, I guess I have a, a few favorite things. It's hard for me to just pick one. Um, one thing is for sure, I think the support at OSU is just unlike a lot of other schools. Um, our deans are just incredible. Um, specifically like, like Dr. Grieco, I'm, I'm a third year, so I'm trying to figure out what the heck I want to do for the rest of my life. Um, and I was having a huge freak out and I emailed him like right before we were supposed to have like our, our, our like Christmas break, like days before. And he hopped on a Zoom with me and talked me through how I was feeling. And 
early on in med school, um, I, I personally struggled a lot with the academic transition um, and I needed a lot more academic support and OSU had that and they provided ample amount of not only one-on-one -on -one time with the um, academic counselor here, but also peer tutoring um, that could help me learn successful strategies in order to um, be a better student and achieve the academic goals that I had set for myself. And then another favorite thing, I guess, even though I'm only supposed to say one, um, is um, I loved our early clinical exposure. You guys briefly heard about LP um, longitudinal practice. You guys heard about that probably during interview day as well. Um, I bet some other students might touch on it as well, but it's a really great experience to kind of dip your toe into clinical practice um, and start applying those things you're learning throughout your classes and see how do I interview a patient and um, how do I present to an attending and that experience for sure made me go into my first rotation as a third year and feel confident in my ability to go see patients on my own, present plans, um, and feel much more confident in my abilities than I think I would have if I didn't have that experience sprinkled throughout my first two years. Good answers. Okay, I'm gonna go back to Alex and Cody. Um, so what resources have you found most helpful? So Alex, during your first year and Cody, what did you find most helpful during your first two years? I think for me, there's been a couple things. Um, something that was already mentioned, the peer tutors, A1. It's really great to learn from your classmates. I think we have some awesome faculty members who teach here, but sometimes your classmates and your peers can just break it down uh, in a way that's a little bit more understandable. So I was in a tutoring group that met once a week um, throughout the first, you know, three, four blocks, um, which was really, really helpful doing practice questions and having just a safe space to where you could admit that you didn't know something and you felt okay doing so. Um, something else that I really, really love um, along with that is our peer group. They make a ton of practice exams that you can use to prepare for your end of block exams, which honestly, they're super helpful and they make you look at content that you may otherwise have kind of glossed over and thought that, well, it wasn't really that important. And just the last thing I really feel like um, the faculty uh, mentorship that I've been able to get here has been phenomenal. Uh, even as a first year, faculty members are so eager to teach you. They're eager to have you in clinic and they really do care about you and what you need. And I'm not just saying that. It's really, really true. I came from LP today and just like the amount of things that I'm able to do as a first year, um, it's just been really awesome. So yeah, I'll echo everything that Alex just said. The peer stuff is amazing. Um, the one thing that I really will add is the fact that I know from talking to Lizzie and getting to know her over the past couple of years that every single class seems to be a resource for each other. We get a ton of resources passed down from people before us. And then at least my class has a group me that's literally labeled OSUCOM 2023 group me where all 200 plus of us are there. And everyone brings a different um, background of knowledge. Um, just for an example, I got a master's in anatomy before I started medical school here. So when we did our MSK block, I was posting every type of anatomy resource that I can. But in the blocks where, for example, for me, a weakness was biochemistry, the people that came in with biochemistry degrees, they had little tips and tricks that helped me learn in ways that I wouldn't have done without them. And the thing that is super nice is that everyone that comes here almost is over the top with trying to help each other. Like I felt like it was the hardest part wasn't finding resource resources. It was finding the resources that were best for me because you almost get an overwhelming like avalanche of things you can look through. So your classmates are an amazing resource too. Um, and I think that's something that's been really, really helpful for me um, because I, like Lizzie, was someone who had to adjust my study strategies um, throughout my first year and find the ways I learned, like helped me be successful. And I did that because of the things I learned from my classmates. That's great. Okay. Oh, and here is our other favorite resident, Dami. I'm so glad you're here with us. Oh, I'm going to hit you with a question right away. You can tell she's um, clinical today. Um, I asked this of Jess earlier. Um, how did OSU prepare you in a way that when you started residency um, that you feel your peers weren't as prepared as you? Um, 
I think the first thing that comes to mind is the exact same thing Jess said, uh, talking about the knowledge base. And I think something else that OSU instilled in me is just the confidence to walk around the hospital after being me newly minted as an MD, knowing that you earned your place and you earned the letters that got you here. And so when you walk in and for the first time you're introducing yourself as Dr. So-and-so to actually like believe it the same way you want your patient to believe it. Every single person that you know I came across at OSU when I was a student already treated me as if um, I was on that path, which was very beneficial. I remember specifically one of the residents, so I'm an OBGYN for those who don't know, um, OBGYN second year resident. One of the residents I worked with in the OSU Department of Obstetrics and Gynecology, every time we went into a patient room, she didn't say, this is my medical student so-and-so, she said, this is my student doctor so-and-so. And so those types of relationships and those types of interactions at Ohio State definitely um, instilled in me that type of confidence that I I think makes me stand out uh, when compared to the rest of my co-residents. I mean, the residents I work with are great, but there's just a, a just different air um, that I walk around with, in my opinion. Thank you for that. Okay, Zach, um, what's your favorite uh, memory or experience um, that you've had during medical school? Oh my gosh, that's such a hard question. Um, I would say, well, I guess there's different categories, right? So I would say of course, throughout medical school, you're going to make some of the closest best friends of your life because of uh, all of the you know tight tight knit uh, opportunities that you have with all of your classmates and other classes as well. So there have been a lot of weddings and engagements and birthdays and things that stand out. But um, I would say, in terms of um, like like academic memory, there was I remember specifically um, I think it was during second year we had this neuroanatomy uh, like section where Dr. Pearson, who you guys will probably meet. Um, who was one of the coolest uh, professors, led, he's a, um, a neuropathologist over at Nationwide, and, and he led this really interesting, like, breakout neuroanatomy session where he had all these, like, different brains that had different pathology and different, like, uh, like games almost, and, and uh, like, little sessions that we were going through in order to learn different disease states and different uh, pathologies and things, and I just thought it was such an interesting way to learn that type of material rather than, like, you know, reading it off of slides or, you know, watching a video or something, we were all like holding it and looking at it and talking about it and doing this very interactive process. And I just always remember that as one of the coolest um, like lectures that I had in, in all of uh, the preclinical years. I like that. Okay, Miss Lizzie, what advice would you give everybody that's tuned in today in terms of making it through your first year of medical school? Um, I think... I think first year of medical school is really hard. Um, I think reflecting back, um, it was probably the hardest year of my life, but I didn't really know it at the time. Um, it's also a lot of fun and it's um, a huge learning. I was even saying like um, at one of the, even as a second year during one of these like um, on admissions, like talking about um, how much growth I think happened in that year. Um, I think you don't exactly realize it at the time, but there's a lot of growth that's happening. Um, so I think one, um, during your first year, be very forgiving of yourself. Um, you can be putting a lot of pressure on yourself because you're used to being this top student who, who's very academically successful, but I think it's okay to have a little grace with yourself um, and kind of set new standards for what is your successful. Um, I think that's super important. You, you have to be like very cautious about um, putting much pressure on yourself. Med school's a lot of fun. You've learned so much. You get to meet really cool people. Um, and I think um, giving yourself a little bit of grace is super important. Um, and also just kind of being flexible. Things are gonna change a lot. There's gonna be a lot of different things coming at you. There's gonna be a lot of information. Um, like Cody said, a lot of resources. Um, sorry, my dog, Bailey. <laughs> um, uh, a lot of different resources. And I think kind of, um, uh, figuring out what works for you and kind of tuning out the noise of what everyone else does is super important. Um, just because someone else is doing all these different practice questions and all these different things does not mean that's what you need and how you need to study. So I think pick your resources carefully, pick your mentors carefully, and really um, reflect on what's helping you become a better person and a student and the aspiring doctor you're trying to be um, and, and really focus in on yourself and be confident in what you can do and what you've achieved that far. Great answer. Okay, uh, Michaela, what's the most valuable aspect of the College of Medicine that you've enjoyed? 
Well, there's definitely a lot. And I think somebody touched on this earlier, but I think we have very special deans at the College of Medicine. Um, they have each influenced my career in a unique way. And I think a lot of times people um, that are deans are highly successful physicians and have other responsibilities, but I have never felt like just another person in the medical school. If I knock on their door and need to talk with them, which has happened multiple times, through different things happening at OSU. They have welcomed me in and have taken whatever time is needed um, to speak with me. I know um, Lizzie mentioned Dr. Grieco. Um, I also had trouble picking my career. Um, I'm going into dermatology and staying at Ohio State and he had at length conversations with me as well as Dr. Lynn. Um, obviously this year, um, you know, brought a whole whole new challenge going through the match with COVID. And they were there every step of the way, emailing us daily, making sure we are ready to go. I mean, I even got text messages at nine o'clock at night, making sure everything was in correctly. Um, so there is such compassion and care for every student in every class at OSU. And I think that's really special. Okay, Dami and Jess, I'm gonna ask you this next question. Um, what advice would you give everyone here um, for how you choose your medical school. Jess, you wanna go first or you want me to go first? You wanna rock, paper, scissors? <laughs> nah, just go ahead. <laughs> there you go. Tommy and I were really good friends in med school and we haven't seen Still each other. Still are, not just past times. <laughs> true, true. But haven't been on Zoom together, so that's why we're, we're extra giddy. Um, no, you go, Tommy. I'll go second. Okay, sounds good. Um, and so as far as it, as far as advice goes, I think something that has been said already in answering a different question is something that I hold true um, when it comes to aspiring student doctors is to focus on you as a person. Compare you to the you of yesterday, not you to the next classmate who's doing 17,000 questions a day. Don't really care about them. Care about me and my progress because comparing yourself to other people can be very detrimental, not just mentally, but just to your confidence as a person, your confidence, your academic skills um, in the work that you are doing. So one thing is to just compare yourself to yourself. Um, the other thing is to take advantage of your support system that you're surrounded by. No one goes through this by themselves successfully, in my opinion. I think it's very difficult to try to do medicine alone and not just a support system as in like family, friends, partners, a dog, a cat, whatever, but also your classmates. Find your core group of classmates that bring you joy. I had my core group of classmates, Jess was part of that, um, people who, you can talk to about what all of you are going through, who understand that, you know what, yes, I am complaining right now, but I still appreciate where I am. I still appreciate the blessing of being able to be here, but I just want to complain right now, like, and that's okay. Um, so people who can pour into you and you, when you're annoyed about certain things, they're like, you know what, let's just all toughen it up. People who are going to go to anatomy lab with you at 6 a.m. and then get donuts from Buckeye Donuts right afterwards. We did that all the time. It was great. So finding that support system, um, not comparing yourself to other people. And lastly, just finding your joy. Everyone has something that brings them joy. For me, it's taking naps, watching Netflix and eating ice cream. Not always in that order, but you know, some semblance of those different things. And so find your thing that brings you joy because medicine is tough. Speaking of a second year OB resident, it's very hard, but I have my joy there. I have the career that's, it's difficult, but it brings me joy every single day, patient interactions, delivering babies, doing surgeries, all of that brings me happiness. And so that leads into the last thing is to genuinely think about the career you're choosing as far as your specialty goes. And when you get to that point of being a fourth year med student, I know for those, you know, getting ready to start med school, that seems like a million years away, but the days are long, but the years are really fast. And that is very, very, like really say everybody, everyone's nodding their heads. They're like, yes, that is so true. And so think about the career that you're choosing and make sure it's something that you're choosing for the right reason. Don't choose it for this person, your aunt, your brother, your sister, like don't choose it for anyone else's happiness, but yourself. Cause you're the one that's going to be waking up early. You're the one that's going to be staying up or studying for whatever board exam you need to take or being late in the OR doing a case. And so if you're doing what you truly love, it will be absolutely worth it. Am I tired? Yes, but am I happy? Also, yes. So those are my main things. I would absolutely echo everything that Dami said, and I'm gonna relate it back for you guys as, as students trying to choose where to spend the next four years of your life. Um, 
it's super important to think about what you want in a career, which like Dami said, it's, it's hard to think about fourth year of med school. And it's even harder to think about what you want to do for the rest of your life. Um, with OSU, it's really nice that you don't have to have all the answers because everything is here. You have the opportunities to explore endless, you know, career paths and specialties and subspecialties and even things outside of just clinical medicine. Um, I would encourage you all to just think about where you feel like home. Look at the students that are gonna be your peers, that are gonna be your mentors. It is so, so, so important to have people around you that you enjoy being around. Like Dami just said, my friends in med school got me through those four years and they still get me through residency. Our group chat blows up all the time of like, guys, you cannot believe what happened today. Like, how do I get through this? These are gonna be your people for the rest of your life, for the rest of your career. And I am so thankful that I came to OSU and I have that support system and I have friends above me, below me, alongside me, um, taking every step of my journey through medicine, you know, with me. Um, that, you know, being said, students are super important, but also the faculty is super important. The staff here cares about you as a person, as a med student, as a future physician, more than I could have ever thought possible. OSU felt like home and, and so I stayed. Um, I hope that you guys all find where your home is. I hope it's here personally. I think we're the best med school in the country and I know that that's a biased opinion, but uh, you guys will find where you fit and I, I hope that you enjoy the journey. It's tough, it's long, but it's great. My gosh, such great words of wisdom from everyone. Thank you guys so much for uh, taking a little time out of your day to help everyone here.